Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, a little Nintendo foreplay. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how's it going? It's going great. Uh, Patrick, this last weekend, uh, my husband and I went out for brunch, and I went with the intention of getting breakfast food. Sure. Um, but it's I, brunch. You have that option. Uh, yes, but I ended up getting like a, um, a chicken pesto sandwich. And he got, like, a salmon salad how, or something. How, how do you mess that up that bad? You went there <laughs> looking for breakfast, and you got a chicken pesto sandwich? I know. Sandwich? I just wasn't in the mood for eggs. And so it was uh-huh. like, but um, I love, love French toast. Yes. And so I was like, well, should we get French toast to share? So we did. And the waitress was like, oh, do you guys want ice cream with that? Whoa. And I was like, yeah. I mean, absolutely. So we 100% got ice cream with it. But what that did is it totally shattered the illusion for me that French toast is anything but dessert. Like, yeah. I've, it, French toast is always just I, – I understand right. now right. that it has always just been dessert that we have fooled ourselves into thinking this is like a breakfast waffles, food. This yeah. is also muffins. Yeah. This is also pancakes. Pancakes especially. Like, it's, it's a cake. We acknowledge it as such. I will tell you, ice cream put it over the top. <laughs> it, that was it amazing French. Way. It okay. was amazing French toast. Um, that sounds great. I want to know exactly where you went, but you don't have to tell people on <laughs> on, on the podcast. Um, yeah, that's great. Uh, that's I mean, that is the promise of brunch, right? Is that you you get one thing and you're like, let me just dip into the other part of this. Uh-huh. Like, like when you go and you have like an omelet, but also like a Bloody Mary. I mean, it is like it is. It was great, and yes. I'm glad that a uh, brunch exists, so a moment like this can happen. But it was also like a little disillusioning to be like, oh yeah, all this time for whatever reason I've just been fooling myself that yeah. French toast wasn't just dessert. I mean, don't that think, I was eating at like nine in the morning. Don't think too hard about cereal either, because you're going to come to the same conclusion I can't, there. Cereal and I have a very serious relationship, and so I, I can never think too deeply about that. Speaking of things, we have a serious relationship with my copy of Sonic Forces for the Nintendo Switch. Would you like to borrow it? You can certainly get on the list to do so. All you got to do is email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com and give us a mailing address where we can send you my copy of Sonic Forces or my copy of Untitled Goose Game inside a Sonic Forces box for you to play as long as you like, which could be uh, zero minutes and zero seconds. Um, you send it back. I pay for postage both ways. It's a perfect borrowing program. Uh, that, you know, Patrick, that's a great point. We, as to my knowledge, have never had somebody receive it and then immediately return it. But that is an option that's on the table. It's definitely an option that's on the table. You could, uh, like... You could see what it is, open it up, put it back in your mailbox, and like lift that little flag up. Yeah, I mean, I guess technically you don't even have to do that. You could probably just get the envelope out, right, return to sender on it. Totally, yeah. Like, not at this address. Right. And then whatever happens at that point will happen. I mean, I <laughs> uh, at, at my work, I we occasionally receive uh, letters addressed to the previous occupant of, of, of the suite that we're in. Uh, and I have written return to sender on things put it in the mailbox and then it's come back to us. <laughs> the system works. So, here's another thing that you can do to help the system work. You can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere that you get your podcast. Anywhere. We appreciate it so much. It really helps people find the show, we think. And one thing we know for sure is Patrick and I really love reading your reviews. And we, of course, love any interaction that That's we right. have with listeners. We love when you write in. Um, we love if you are talking to us on Discord. We love if you, you tweet at us. join the Discord. You can email us or uh, tweet at us, and we'll send you an invitation. But uh, reviews are double whammies. They help people find the show. They delight Patrick and myself. If you leave us a five-star review on the U.S. Apple Podcast Store, we will give you a shout-out on the show. We want to recognize that. If you leave us a review anywhere else, we can't really see it. It's hard for us to track that, but we still want to give you a shout-out. So definitely let us know. Send us an email. Hit us up on Twitter. And um, we can acknowledge your contribution. 
Uh, speaking of your contribution, we are going to be ranking the 48 original tracks in uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And I don't think we can do it on our own. No. There are too many tracks, uh, tracks that I've known for far too long. I'm intimately familiar with these tracks. We need your opinions. Let us know what tracks sh need to be up towards the top of the list. Let us know what tracks you think are garbage. Any opinions you have about them, please email us, Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. Gmail uh, and get those in by August 19th. Um, so that we can incorporate it into our list. That's less than a month. Don't wait till the last minute. It's not. It's not a lot of time. No, get it in now. And look, if you need to like go through and play all the tracks again, so you remember, uh, like, oh yeah, I hate Grumble Volcano. Sure. Like, just you know, get that in there. It's a wrong opinion. It's a great track. I love the <laughs> fact that every lap is different. Well, we'll see. I could be swayed if enough people wrote in. That's true. We can always swayed. Here is another thing that I would like to put out there. Another way that we would like to sway people. Yes, that's right. So uh, recently in the House of Representatives in the United States, a Re Respect for Marriage Act was passed. And this is a law with the intention of like um, making gay marriage... Part, enshrining it in enshrining law. Enshrining it in law. Because right now it is... Um, it exists in the United States because of a Supreme, Supreme Court decision... And as we recently saw with Roe v. Wade, those can be overturned and those rights revoked at any time. And even the uh, the finding or the the results in the the Dobbs uh, case uh, really did reveal that any of those uh, rights that we uh, were given through Supreme Court cases um, are under review and therefore under threat uh, of of losing them. So the Respect for Marriage Act passed the House and is now in the Senate, and it needs ten Republican senators willing to vote yes for it and there are senators who are undecided and if you live in a state with senators who are undecided on the respect for marriage act i ask you to please contact them and um tell them that you would like them to vote for this bill and honestly either way right like if if i mean first of all figure out who your senators are and uh, what their feelings are on the subject if they are for uh, for the law, uh, call them up and say thank you, and that is something that's important to you. Um, and if they're against it, uh, call them up and say, hey, <laughs> change your mind. This is important to me. Um, and this is, I mean, honestly, this is something that we can extend to a lot of uh, rights that are currently uh, under threat. Um, the Defense of Marriage Act, though, is uh, one that actually seems currently within within our grasp of like actually passing respect for marriage act respect for marriage uh, yeah, act. yeah yeah sorry my bad um what did i say i said defense of marriage which i think is could be the reverse uh, yes yeah. i think so <laughs> yeah yeah um so uh in, in any event uh uh call call your call your senators uh when you get those numbers uh save them in your phone uh put them as one of your favorites so every time you look at your phone you're like oh yeah i can call this guy um they hear those messages, whether uh, they listen to them themselves or if their aides are uh, relaying those messages to them. It helps and it matters. Uh, all right, Mark, let's get into uh, the topic at hand. Let's cast some Nintendo foursomes, or let's cast some non-Nintendo foursomes with Nintendo characters. Okay, so... Why are we doing this? It's something we always have to, that's part of the groundwork, right? <laughs> right. Um, and not just in the general way of like, why do you wake up in the morning? Why do you record an sure, Nintendo podcast? Yeah. Why any of Let's these not things? examine any of that too closely. No, thank you. Um, I think we're doing this because uh, with the recent success of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are on gaming's collective mind, right? Um, and the turtles are famously four turtles, each with distinct personalities, and we thought it would be fun to take a couple uh, groups of four with distinct personalities and jam Nintendo characters into those slots to sort of, like, fill them out. But I think there's there's another, like, sort of interesting corollary with, like, Nintendo and four, right? Um, like, the Nintendo 64 has the four controller ports, so did the GameCube. That That's sort of like a, uh, you know, Nintendo started the standard early with, like, two, but then was like, nah, nah, nah. We do four. Yeah, and even like Super Mario Brothers 2 yep. has the four characters that you can choose from. Um, yeah, for some reason it just kind of like rings true that there's like this association with Nintendo. Yeah, that there's like uh, there's an element of like family play in that too, right? That like 
at, at two people getting together and playing a game that's a fun social thing, but like at four, it's a party, mm -hmm. right? Like that's they made Mario Party because they could have four people playing at once. Yep. If only three people could play, no, that's Mario crowd, <laughs> <laughs> right? Three, no, two's company, three's a crowd. How's that work? I, uh, no matter what the saying is, I think uh, your point to Mario Party specifically is correct. Um, all right, so we've got a handful of foursomes. Um, do we want to reveal what they are all now, or should we reveal them as we as we cast them? Let we let's reveal them as we cast them. I think that's a fine way to approach this. We're starting with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, they're the the topic at hand. Um, let's just quickly review who's in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and what their deal is. Um, so there's Leonardo. He's the leader. He's a little bit on the stoic side. Um, feels a lot of responsibility to uh, protect his brothers. Yeah, he um, he's blue, right? He's the blue one. Okay. Yeah. Do you yeah. want me to uh, l l uh, describe all these characters? <laughs> well, or I do can. You want to go back and forth? Well, yeah, I can help. So um, <laughs> uh, next is Raphael, mm -hmm. and Raphael is reckless. I yes. would say that's his sort of thing, but he's he's tough. He's I tough. mean, I guess they're all tough. He's, like, the strongest? He's the toughest, okay. though. Like, he's the one most likely to get the crap beaten out of him mm, and then, like, mm -hmm. stand up and keep fighting. He's the tank. He's he's the tank, um, but he's also got, like, an attitude problem. He's the most likely to go off on his own when mm -hmm. the rest of the team is working well He'd together. He'd get detention if the Turtles went to high school. Right, and they never will. <laughs> Although Turtle High School, I, th I, would, I would watch that. I would watch that. Uh, next up is Donatello. He's the dork, so we love him. Um, he's, like, an inventor... Uh, and is a, a curious uh, uh, a curious boy. Oh, yeah. If we didn't say it, Raphael's red. Yes. Donatello has, like, the purple mask. And then Michelangelo is the fun-loving turtle. Yes. He's the fun-loving turtle. Um, one of the things that I have grown to appreciate about Michelangelo in uh, later years is that he's the turtle with the most social intelligence. Mm. Um, he is empathetic. He understands what his brothers need, what they want, um, and is generally like the best sort of ambassador for the turtles to non-turtle people. Um, it's easy to uh, reduce him to party dude. <laughs> that's so easy, all right? And that's not what he is. He's emotionally intelligent. That's right. And sometimes you just need to party. Um, <laughs> no, Mark, that's not what we're reducing. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm saying it's like the – it's um, – uh, minor point mm, in to mm -hmm. the major point, and he's he's orange. He's the orange one. He's the orange one. Uh, all right. Uh, so, leader, tough guy, dork, party dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are there any Nintendo characters that jump out to you as uh, obvious analogs here? I'm I'm, I'm actually going to start with uh, with Leonardo. Okay. Um, I think Leonardo may be Link. Oh, because interesting. There's, there's something so like pure about both like Leonardo's intentions of like be a good ninja lead the team um, and Link who's just like save the day also they both wield swords um, Link is green <laughs> like a turtle <laughs> I know they're all green um, but they're, they're, there's there's a stoicism about both of them that I, that I think uh, aligns Link with Leonardo yeah I like that um, so let's see it, this doesn't. Th none of these are final until we lock it in. By the yeah, way, yeah, for sure. Also, we haven't talked about this, so we definitely don't have to do this. But are we limiting ourselves using a Nintendo character like once on this list? So one, if Ooh. Link is Leonardo, then is out is he like out of contention? Basically. Okay, I think yes. But if we want to go back and like rescue him, from okay, it, then then we we can do that. Okay, but it like that, that's like a flag on the on the field, right? Like we need to do some work, yeah, and insert someone else in into that yes. position. Yeah. So yeah, okay, I like that. Perfect. So Leonardo, um, Link, Raphael. Well. Uh, I don't necessarily have somebody top of mind, yeah. but like yeah, we can talk through who he is and what what characters are like that. Um, uh, angry, independent. Um, do you th um, uh, reckless? So I I don't know that reckless would necessarily fit here. Mm -hmm. Um, but my thought when you were saying that was kind of like Samus in Metroid Other M. Ooh, okay. I mean, S Samus in Other M. 
I think it was like she, defiant with her like thumbs down to yeah, Adam. Yeah, that's right. She she is defiant, and even though there is a team there, she ignores them the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean this is a pretty good analog. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's. Uh, Samus is going to be our, um, our 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 Raphael. I guess the the one part there that doesn't totally ring true is the anger, um, but like. You have to imagine she's she's angry, right? We just don't see her express it very often. Right, because she's not super expressive. She's not super expressive. She gets used by everyone. Um, yeah, I think she's mad. I'd be mad if I was Samus. We're taking some heavy hitters off the board early. That's oh Boy, what a great point. Um, Donatello. Uh, I want to say Professor Egad, but maybe that's leaning too hard it's, into it's the invention too, part. I think it's too hard into the invention <laughs> part. And also is a little like... Uh, um, Professor Egad is also like old and crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna suggest a a, a, a WarioWare character here, Doctor Crygor. Okay, also an inventor, also, also maybe a crazy old man, a little old, <laughs> I think. Has well, okay. a daughter. What about yeah? So what about the daughter? What about Penny? Okay, she's uh she makes inventions. She is uh we were just looking fun. Yeah, yeah, we were just looking at um get it together, and she's flying in like a spaceship. So yeah. well, you know, she's, she's like she's like got a little uh, backpack with like water a water uh-huh. gun and she can like freeze herself in place. Yeah, um, that seems like something Donatello would do. Perfect. Um, all right, and then Michelangelo, who is the most socially intelligent Nintendo character you can and think of? Maybe likes to party. And and maybe it's not their defining trait. It's, I really hate that he's being reduced <laughs> to this. <laughs> and it can't be Roy, okay? <laughs> right, 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 right. No, it can't be. It can't be Roy. Uh, of, of, of the Koopalings, uh-huh. not of, of Fire Emblem. <laughs> but uh, both, I think, are wrong. No, both are uh, not. Is it a mistake that there are two different characters named Roy in Super Smash Brothers uh, uh, Ultimate? Oh, I haven't really thought How about did it. that one slip. Yeah, I guess it was inevitable because <laughs> unless they're going to rename Roy the Koopa Kid or just omit him, right? And I would be furious. Yeah, but I'm guessing. I'm guessing the is the voice sample the same? No, like it's, w- oh, when. Well, it's a good. That's a good question. I'm. I'm not sure. Did like, is the does the intonation change? With with the with the Koopa Kid. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um. Okay. Most Socially, emotionally yeah. intelligent. Hmm. Is there a like a, a Mario RPG or Paper Mario character that kind of falls into this bucket of like, I was thinking Mario and this might not be right, but what about Toadette? Cause I feel like okay. Toadette sometimes plays the, um, I don't think Michelangelo is anti-union. <laughs> <laughs> well, has anybody asked him? <laughs> um, I, I feel like Toadette sometimes plays almost like the role of like, peacemaker amongst the mm, like toad brigade okay. sometimes or at least is like the uh, uh she's sort of like the, the outsider of the toad brigade she's like the outsider but i feel like she's the most stable of the toad brigade uh, that is definitely but that's because the rest of them are a mess <laughs> yeah i mean like just an absolute mess Uh huh. although now that i'm thinking about it like the blue one could be donatello uh captain toad could be leonardo like they this, this could be the toad brigade <laughs> but i i i have a counter pitch for okay you. yeah um, everyone loves him. Is a bit of a party dude. KK Slider. Yes. Okay. There KK we go. Slider knows when it's time to uh, bring out the acoustic guitar. KK Slider knows when it's time to bring out the turntables. He knows when it's time to not show up. Yeah. You know? That's right. People aren't in the mood for it, KK. Or your island doesn't have enough stars. You think Michelangelo is going to come to your two star <laughs> island? I don't think so. <laughs> This is very good. This, this is, is very good. good. Okay, so our, our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Link is Leonardo, Samus is Raphael, Penny is Donatello, and K.K. Slider is Michelangelo. Uh, that's, a good, that's a good team of four. That's a good team of four. Um, next up, we are doing the Fantastic Four, uh, which, of course, consists of... Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, um, the smartest man in the Marvel Universe? Ooh, probably the smartest man. I believe uh, uh, Moon Girl, um, Lunella, forget the character's last name, um, but she's the smartest character in the Marvel Universe. And then I think Riri Williams is uh, just under her, and then probably Mr. Fantastic. And he can stretch. He can stretch. Uh, he's also uh, arrogant, a little bit of a jerk. Yeah. Um, the patriarch of the team. Um, Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman, 
uh, maternal. She's the, the, the mom character. Um, is uh, Karen can turn herself invisible. Johnny Storm, the human torch. Uh, cocky, right? Arrogant, yeah. young. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a... Uh, he's the... Um, uh, the Top Gun Maverick. He's definitely the Top Gun Maverick. Oh, uh, the Fantastic Four. I'm, d- I'm just going to put Fox McCloud uh, on... on for sh- for yeah, right oh, now, that's for, very for right good. Now, that's we, very we, we good. We can discuss it. Uh-huh. Uh, and then Ben Grimm, The Thing, uh, Gruff, uh, loves to talk about living on Yancey Street. Um, <laughs> Jewish. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's figure out... Let's, let's revisit uh, uh, Fox McCloud as, as the Human Torch. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really good. He has, I mean, we were talking about Maverick from Top Gun. Mm -hmm. You know, that same sort of, like, uh, fly guy energy. Um, And, I mean, yeah, I kind of think it's perfect. Yeah, I think think that's... Also, can you imagine, like, a fox engulfed in flames? Just, like, (laughs) flying around Marvel's New York City? Like, that'd be great. I would like to see that, yeah. I think it'd be good. For sure. Uh, All right. Sue Storm, Mr. Fantastic, and uh, The Thing. Okay, so for Mr. Fantastic, and maybe, like, I'm glomming too much on to, like, the arrogance. And uh, so maybe this isn't – we'll have to discuss it. But what do you think about Ganondorf? I'm thinking especially, like, Ocarina of Time, like, Ganondorf. Um, I think that's – I think that's really good, and I think that's uh, it's a little bit weird to use a villain to cast what is obviously a a heroic character, but the Ultimate Universe, uh, Mr. Fantastic, a.k.a. the Maker, is like a straight-up villain. Yeah, I was going to say, in the multiverse of the Marvel Universe, there's for sure evil versions of Reed Richards. Right, including this very prominent one. (laughs) Um, I I just, I, I had to Google, I'm so sorry, I had to Google... Um, arms characters, the characters from arms. Oh, right. Because yeah. they stretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So totally. Like, um, but I don't think any of the. He's not Spring Man. He's not Ninjara. He's not Master Mummy. Is like, he that. Uh, the the gel dude? The like. The witch dude? The, 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 the like jelly guy. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, the jelly guy whose name I can't remember. Yeah. And doesn't appear to be on this list. Who's Dr. Coyle? <laughs> I'm looking him up, looking up Dr. Coyle. Okay. If it's a doctor who stretches, Mark, that may be... I mean, yeah, that may be it. Uh, let's see. Mm, I don't think so. Do- Dr. Coyle is... Uh, Dr. Coyle is an arms fighter introduced in the 5.0 update. Uh, unlike her fellow arms fighters, Dr. Coyle got her arms extended from experiments. She's the director of arms laboratories. Um, and then an ad popped up, so I can't read it anymore. This feels... Dr. Coyle just seems... Is just way too cool. Yeah, that's right. Like, has almost like an emo thing going. Yeah, has got, like, bright green hair that, like, falls over her eye mask. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Mr. Fantastic, definitely not cool. I mean, I'm not going to stop pitching Doc, uh, Professor Egad, <laughs> so I'm just putting that out there. Do you think that there is a universe in the multiverse where Professor Egad is evil? Maybe, like, <laughs> accidentally. I don't know the Professor in... This is... It, this sounds like a slight, but it is not. <laughs> I don't know the Professor Egad is smart enough to be evil. I th- yes, yes. He's clever, uh-huh. but I don't think he has, like, long-range thinking It doesn't skills. feel that way. Right. He just invents what's in front of him. Uh-huh. He's more of a tinkerer. Yeah. If we were doing the... Uh, it's like th- Bell's dad from um, Beauty That's and right. the Beast. That's right. Maurice. Yes. <laughs> Crazy old Maurice. Um, so who did we say for Mr. Fantastic? Who was the first pitch? Uh, Ganondorf? Ganondorf. I think that's right. Okay. Um, Ganondorf is such a good good pick for that. Uh, Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman. This one I honestly find challenging. I do too. I can't say that I've read too many Fantastic Four com- comics that do a good job of characterizing her outside of, like, Mother, right? And mind you, most of the Fantastic Four comics that I've read include... Um, Valeria and um, their son, whose name is uh, eluding me at the moment. Um, so, hmm. Can turn invisible. I mean, th- the motherly aspect of it makes me th- want to say Rosalina. 
Well, so there's another direction with with motherly, and you know, especially because we are not casting Franklin. Franklin, thank you. Yeah. Um, he has the power to control realities, <laughs> Mark. Um, that seems uh, incredibly powerful. Y- yeah, I mean, and it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so uh, because we are not casting the kids, right. Valeria or Franklin, um, maybe that we need to think of her more as like. Uh, Ma- maternal without actually being the mother, right? Like, yeah, that, so that's being like more protectorate than than actually maternal. Yeah. What about Palutena? Yes, that is very good. Because also she creates like force fields, uh-huh. which is another thing that uh, the Invisible Woman can do. I like that a lot. Um, Palutena, of course, from um, Kid Icarus, uh, and most notably in Kid Icarus Uprising. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's the way to go. And finally, Ben Grimm, the thing. Love Ben Grimm. Uh huh. Um, I love a hulking beast that uh, can't be killed uh, and is just like a chill dude that's fun to hang out with. Is this Funky Kong? Ooh, or is it just Donkey Kong? Oh, it could just be Donkey Kong um, from the Donkey Kong Country games. Re- yes, yes, yeah. that's right. Um, but could I mean make the case for Funky Kong? Well, just you said chill dude who yeah. can't be killed, and that sounds <laughs> sounds like Funky Kong and Tropical Freeze to me. That's canon, right? <laughs> a- actually, uh, hold on, hold on. Funky Kong is immortal. <laughs> I do think that's canon. Yeah, I, th- I do think that's true. What about a Goron of some of some kind? Oh, like yes, Daruk or uh-huh. um, what is the name of the like modern day Goron hero in Breath of the Wild? Uh, I can't remember. Um, but I mean, we could just go with Daruk. Like, yeah, I think that that may make the most sense. I like that a lot. All right, uh, this is good. This is Daruk. Daruk. Daruk, Daruk, Daruk is, is the on thing. fire. Yeah. <laughs> We're workshopping it. Yeah, it's a, it's, yeah. it's a going in previews next week. We're, we're, we're almost there. Um, all right, so our Fantastic Four, Reed Richards, Reed Richards is played by Ganondorf. Uh, Sue Storm is Palutena. Johnny Storm is played by Fox McCloud. And Ben Grimm is Daruk. Um, Daruk. Daruk is, is the, the thing. thing. There we go. <laughs> uh, all right, next up, our next foursome uh, from Little Women... The Little Women themselves, the March Sisters. Um, so <laughs> let's go through the March Sisters. Uh, so first there's Meg. She's the boring one. She's the oldest. <laughs> Ouch. Wow. Coming I out mean, swinging. What? It's, I feel like this is... Uh, she is the one... I feel like uh, she's the... What I would say yes. is that she's the one who Who's is boring. most content to play the like role that society expects from her at the time. Yes, absolutely. Um has a family, like, you know, is just, like, she she falls into that, like, I do what I have to do because I'm a woman in this era. Um, next up is Joe, um, and Joe is uh, the one who is writing the story of, of Little Women. Uh, fiery. Fiery, stubborn, kind of a tomboy, um, uh, independent, uh, you know, refusing marriage proposals um, and doing her own thing. Uh, then there's Beth. Who is the youngest? So definitely gets babied. Well, she's the second youngest. Oh, sh- sorry, she's yes. the second youngest. But it gets babied. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, everybody loves her. She plays the piano, and she is super dead. Yeah, famously <laughs> dies, <laughs> and ruins like everyone's life in dying. Right? That like when uh, when Beth dies is just the saddest thing. Yeah, it's definitely the uh, emotional turn of the novel. Um, and then there's Amy. She's the youngest. Um, and she's like uh, a, an artistic prodigy, uh, gets to travel Europe with like her aunt or something, um, and uh, is just sort of like supernaturally good at the things that she's good at, like mm-hmm. is uh, uh, frustrating to the rest of the family in that way that she doesn't seem to have to try to be an, an excellent yeah, artistic she's, uh, Yeah, she can be vain, mm-hmm. and uh, she definitely is also coddled, the, the youngest. Yes, yeah. yes, totally. Um, all right. Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, do you have any pictures for this? Okay, all right. So, um, let's see. Starting with Meg, I feel like the is happy to perform the role that society expects of her. I want to say Princess Peach, except yes. in Super Mario Odyssey at the end when she's like, all right, I've had enough of this. I'm out of here. I mean, in that way, that almost makes her uh, Amy, right? In that she, like... Travels the world in <laughs> cute little outfits. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is true. So are we saying uh, Amy is Princess Peach 
at the end of Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah, I think that's right. I okay. think Amy is Princess Peach. Yeah. Parentheses at the end of Super uh-huh, Mario. Odyssey. I like that. Um, all right, let's let's figure out Beth because I feel like Beth is going to be hard. What Mario character is uh, so sweet, so lovable? We just don't want them to get hurt, and then they get hurt. Um, really, just like a tragic <laughs> a tragic character is Beth. Is this um? Was this the baby Metroid from <laughs> from Super Metroid? We do okay, so we do all love the baby Metroid. It is like honestly, Nintendo does so few character deaths as like part of their parts of their stories that like I am I am having a hard time like drawing on examples. But that baby Metroid does die. Yep, sacrifices itself. Yeah, the emotional turning point for Samus's life. That's right. For the entire series. Has those little pinchers. Could probably play the piano with enough um, practice. Yeah. I mean, especially when it gets big, right? Yeah, totally. Do you think when a Metroid, like, absorbs the energy of a, a being that it, like, takes on some of the, its abilities or skills or physical characteristics? I like. I would like to think so. So, like, if a Metroid landed on and sucked the life out of Franz Liszt, <laughs> right. do you think you could yeah. play the piano? And it's not like it doesn't become, like, a pod person, person version of no. Franz Liszt. It's still a Metroid. But right. it just, like, gains those abilities. Yeah, or at least, like, his sensibilities. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, I think Baby Metroid um, is, is perfect for, uh, for Beth. So, Willful... Oh, uh, sorry. Joe is kind of who I'm thinking of next. Ah, <sighs> boy. Um, Joe's such a good... Strong, cool character. Do you have something, Mark? I, you have I, something. I have something. I don't know that it's right. Yeah. Um, I can't even count the amount of times that I've said that so far in this episode. <laughs> uh, Urbosa? Urbosa is pretty good. But Urbosa is also, like, a warrior. Yeah. And there's no real, like, tomboy aspect to Urbosa. Like, Urbosa is right. not taking on some of the character characteristics that are unexpected for her, right. you know, like, gender. Right. Uh, so, I mean, is, is this a case where we have to go back and say that we used Samus Aran too early? Well, mm, that's interesting. I don't know that that has to be the case, but, like, because Samus would be a good Joe, I think. I think so. I, I feel Independent. like I feel like the part where yeah. it's stubborn, and but I feel like the part where uh, I get hung up on is that Samus does not come across to me as like artistically passionate. Right. Right. No, you're right. She is very driven, mm-hmm. but it but it does not come. Ac- but yeah, it, she doesn't strike me as someone who would be a writer. Um. So this makes me think that we need to turn to the. WarioWare characters, because I think the WarioWare characters give us a nice, like, bench of uh, strong, cool, artistic women. Um, so, like, what about Ashley? Oh, yeah. Ashley's the, She's the witch. witch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fiercely independent, uh, a little bit of a weirdo. <laughs> um, and, uh, like... I'm just looking at uh, uh, the like Ashley's title card from uh, WarioWare Get It Together. It says dislikes, cute stuff, expressing emotions, unnecessary chit chat, likes, casting spells, food, her pal Red. Just change that to her pal Lori, and I think we've basically described. I mean, that is really good. That is really good. I'm gonna throw this out there, but yes. I actually don't think it's as good. But just going to put it out there because I, I, um, uh, Ayumi. From Famicom Detective Club? Ooh. Oh, I think that might be better. Mark, I think that might be better. Because she's, like, um, a great detective. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of takes it on herself to get the job done. Yep. I also think that there's, uh, like, in Famicom Detective Club, there's always, like, a... Um, just be, because you have the detective and uh, Ayumi there, that there's like a little bit of an implied romance or like an, it, right. like an intentionality towards the definitely romance. Definitely your character has like a crush. Your character definitely has a crush, yeah. but Ayumi seems uninterested. No. Because well, w- you're a doof. You are an absolute <laughs> doof. 
Ayumi is like way out of your league. But also, you're like the uh, well, no spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was about to spoil yes. the end of yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. the Forgotten Air. I think either of these are great picks. I think Ayumi's the, the way to go, <laughs> um, and and we can use Ashley again again later. Okay, so Ayumi from Famicom Detective Club. Perfect. And so that leaves Meg. Ah, <sighs> boy. And we already used Princess Peach from the end of Super Mario Odyssey. Mm -hmm. What about Isabel? Animal Crossing. Oh, yeah. 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 So Isabel, um, she does exactly what's expected of her. Very happy in her role. Very happy in her role. Even though it's like, Girl, you're at resident services 24-7. <laughs> you don't have a house on this island. <laughs> totally content to just do what everyone expects her to do. Mm -hmm. Keeps the whole thing together. Keeps mm -hmm. it running. That's. I think that's a very good pick. Yeah, I think I I Isabel from Animal Crossing. All right. So, Mark, the March sisters <laughs> are uh, uh, Meg is being played by Isabel. Joe is being played by Ayumi. Uh, Beth is being played by the baby Metroid. And Amy is played by Princess Peach parentheses at the end of Super Mario Odyssey. The other thing I like about Beth is because uh, she falls into the lake and gets hypothermia and dies, right? Um, and that's the Metroids are weak to cold. <laughs> Beth gets hit with that ice beam is what happens. <laughs> Sayonara, Beth. <laughs> Up next, we're talking the heroes of the Wizard of Oz. So that is uh, Dorothy Gale. The Scarecrow. The Tin Man. And the Cowardly Lion. <clears throat> Scarecrow thinks he's dumb, but isn't dumb. Tin Man thinks he has no emotions, but is nakedly emotional. Mm -hmm. Cowardly Lion thinks he's a coward, uh, isn't. <laughs> is actually brave. Although, is he actually brave? He, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right? Like, when it comes <laughs> down to it? He's I, I guess he's brave when it comes down to it because his friends are also brave. Sure. He's brave by association. Yeah. And I just, I don't think that that's something that like the Tin Man doesn't need the other two characters to like talk deeply about their emotions for him to also express emotions. Yeah, that's right. And the Scarecrow does, Scarecrow it turns out a genius, like just has plans, makes them up on the fly. I know. The Scarecrow, it, it's all... Um Nice. Everything about it. It's all, it's all nice, but it doesn't really make any sense. No, it doesn't really make any sense. And then Dorothy uh, just wants a place where she belongs. Mm -hmm. um, turns out, I guess that's at home all along. Yeah, I or I guess... What's Dorothy's arc? <laughs> Do we know it? I, I, I feel like Dorothy's arc is that she learns to appreciate the things she has. Yeah. But, I mean, she goes from living on her aunt and uncle's dirt farm uh -huh. to experiencing a magical world full of friends. But she hated it. Like, she, uh, her entire goal was to get home, right? There yes. Were, like, there were r rarely... I mean, she was like, wow, a horse of a... Like, I mean, that's, that's the devil you know, right? A, right, a horse, right, a horse, horse of, like, many know. different colors. Right. And yet, when given the opportunity, she's Joseph like... In the Technicolor dream coat for a second, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, she... But given the opportunity, as soon as, like... Right, she gets on that balloon and heads home. Right. Right. So, okay, her goal is just to get home. I mean, you know that at the end of the movie, the way she returns is that she... She wakes up, yes. No, 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 no that she clicks the... Like, the, oh, the, right, right. the yes, wizard right, goes right. away in the balloon. <laughs> that's right. And the wizard and Dorothy... And we're uh, not doing the wizard here. <laughs> we're not casting the wizard. No. Yeah, you're right. Well, and also the way that she really uh, escapes is she wakes up. Because the whole thing was a dream. Yeah, that's also true. Right. Okay, so... Um, have we explained the plot <laughs> of the Wizard of Oz <laughs> in like the most confusing, awful way possible? Uh, I after after talking about it, I don't like any of these characters anymore. <laughs> maybe the Tin Man. I think maybe the Tin Man. I like the Tin Man. Yeah, a little bit of therapy wakes him up. Um, yeah. So who who is the sensitive sweet boy of the Nintendo universe? And is it Luigi? Is Luigi the Tin Man? Yes. Yes. <laughs> That warms my heart. Yeah, I, d I do think our... Uh, or, I mean, is he the Cowardly Lion? Uh, I was thinking the Cowardly Lion... Well, it doesn't really fit now that we've, like... Um, now that we've talked all these characters into the dirt, but... <laughs> well, go back. Go, I was going to say back, Slippy. Yeah. I was going to say Slippy. Oh, for the Cowardly Lion. Yeah. And maybe that's more... Uh, 
it actually, I take that back because it's not really fitting. Because Slippy has the appearance of, so it's actually completely all wrong. <laughs> Slippy has the appearance of somebody who should not be brave, right. but is act, in fact very brave. And that is the opposite of the cowardly lion, who yeah. has the appearance of somebody who should be brave and lacks bravery. Um, now that I'm thinking of it, it's very hard to come up with a cowardly video game character who's not Luigi. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, well, you, here, well, Professor Egad. Okay, no. <laughs> I'm just testing the waters. <laughs> Thank you. Just testing Thank the waters. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that you're keeping him in the conversation. Um, yeah, I, I think it might need to be Luigi because he is a coward. <laughs> or, and, but he's able to gird his loins, you know, right. when the moment calls for it. And just be, uh, you know bolstered by Polterpup and Professor Egad. Yeah. Polterpup isn't uh, the Cowardly Lion. No, is no. The Pol- Polterpup is um, too, like... Uh, He's too cheery and outgoing. Yeah, and, like, am- like <laughs> ambitious. He has too much ambition. <laughs> He's willing to, like, g- go ahead and, you know, look at things. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> Luigi would never. <laughs> Um, uh, so I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm just running through a couple ideas. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Uh, this is all on the sub- sub- subject of, of a cowardly lion, um, Little Mac. Mm. Someone who's like kind of burly, but also like. But Little Mac has too much heart, right? He like Little Mac too is too much. Yeah. Like I'm getting beat down, but like I get, get back up, up again. again. <laughs> They're never gonna keep him down. No. Um, Yoshi, the cowardly Yoshi. Yoshi also not cowardly. Uh, yeah. you know, he's it really is hard to find a cowardly video game character. What about a Kong? Is there a Kong who's cowardly? Is there mm. a cowardly Kong? I mean, that would be a great name. That that should be a new Kong. It definitely should. No, but they're all too willing to like put themselves out there too. Shoot. So I think Luigi is perfect for the Tin Man and the Cowardly <laughs> Lion, but I think he has to be the Cowardly Lion just because I can't it, think yeah, of another I, option. No, I think I I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, all right then, um, Luigi. I also think the Scarecrow is going to be difficult because you have like another character who like is thinks they're dumb but is not actually dumb like it was inside of them all along yeah it's tricky it seems like the wizard of oz has a bunch of characters that you think are archetypes that aren't yeah (laughs) right where it's like oh the character who doesn't think he can feel but can what is that yeah i guess the only reason we think of them as archetypes is Is because because of the wizard of oz Oz. yeah Yeah. okay (laughs) all right all right we're both stalling for time because this one has proven too difficult for us. This is really hard. What if the scarecrow is Dr. Mario? What if yeah. the scarecrow is um, Dr. Goomba Tower? Now that's good. Always underestimated. Uh-huh. Um, there's they, something about like the construction of the Goomba Tower and like the scarecrow feels being tenuous. Like, up, on that, uh-huh. up on that pole. Um, it feels like the Goombas probably underestimate themselves you can't i just can't imagine that somebody sees three goombas and they're saying nice things about them and certainly not like i want that to be my primary care provider Uh uh-huh but Um, clearly smart enough to go to medical school graduate medical school yeah defy expectations do you think each one of them has a uh, medical degree or do you think they share one i think collectively they were able i mean like i don't want to oversell the intelligence of the of dr goomba tower i think collectively they're able to make it through that still feels like well, I don't know. Me and, like, two friends, how long would we have to study collectively to get one medical license? Also, it ki- you would kind of be getting three opinions in one. Yeah, that's true. So good bang for the buck. That's right. If you need a second opinion, you just, like, look down a foot and a half uh-huh. and you find the next one. Yeah. How tall is a Goomba? <laughs> Canonically? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Mario, how... We've been questioned for another before, time. Yes. <laughs> All we know is Kirby's disturbingly big or disturbingly small. Right. And frankly, I don't care to revisit revisit that conversation. Dorothy. Do we have a Dorothy? This is the one that I was thinking of Mona from, uh, oh. uh, from WarioWare. Yeah. Tell us about Mona. So uh, Mona's kind of like thing is that she is almost like the Leslie Nope 
of the WarioWare universe. Like, you know, like she is an a frighteningly co- competent. She's an overachiever as yes. well. Like, so she, you know, does work, school, she has pets, uh, she's a high school student, you know, like she does it all. Plus, she's a huge fan of Wario for mysterious reasons. Nobody knows why. It's almost like she has it two together, and so people are like, What why, why do what do you, you like see in Wario? Yeah. yeah. Um, but that is also and we've talked about this before. Um, I don't understand why everyone is friends with what because ev- they're they're his friends and employees. They put their trust, a- a- their friendship, and their trust in this man. I understand employee, sure. Uh, but we've friend? all worked for gross people, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, yeah, but th- they are also friends. They yeah. must believe in his vision for this game that he's making. I also think, and this is not um, nothing against Dorothy, but I think Mona might be too competent. Hmm. Like, they defeat the Wicked Witch by sheer by luck. accident. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, and it doesn't seem like Dorothy would do that. We sort of need like a cipher, right? Like a character who just is, is is like the main character in their thing. I w- we've got the Super Smash Brothers character select screen, and my eyes keep uh, keep passing over Sora from Kingdom Hearts. Ooh. Uh, I so I don't know enough. I don't know a ton about Kingdom Hearts. Like, I don't know the details, but I would be willing to believe that a lot happens to Sora. Yes, this is what I believe as well. And also that Sora is very well-traveled in universes wholly unlike his own. Yes, absolutely. Uh, So maybe Dorothy, in this case, is being played by Sora. I like this. From Kingdom Hearts. Yep. Um, Which, look, you want to tell me that's not a Nintendo character? I say fine. (laughs) But we've got bigger problems. We have to figure out. <laughs> we have to figure out <laughs> who's the Tin, the tin man. man. Yeah. Who on earth is, is it? Gooigi? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Gooigi tastes like coffee and uh, doesn't really have any thought. Yeah, that's right. So in that way, maybe he's the, the scarecrow. scarecrow. But Doctor Goomba Tower is perfect. I'd, we we shouldn't touch that. No. Okay, the Tin Man. I uh, thinks they have no emotion, but are actually very empathetic. Here's a pitch. We've been taught by the Kirby franchise that all the villains are actually sweethearts at heart. All you need is to throw them a little uh, smooch, and then they're on your team. What about Meta Knight? Oh, my gosh, yes. Oh, my gosh, yes. That is so good. That makes me very happy. All right. Meta Knight is uh, the the Tin Man. Daruk. Daruk. Daruk Daruk is the the thing. thing. All right. So the heroes of the Wizard of Oz. Dorothy is played by Sora. Scarecrow by Dr. Goomba Tower. Tin Man is played by Meta Knight. And Cowardly Lion by the only character that it could possibly be played by, and that's Luigi. All right. All right. So just just to be clear, uh, Luigi's not on the table anymore. Um... Uh, what uh, Princess Peach is no longer on the table. Fox McCloud is no longer on the table. Ganondorf, Link, Samus. We've taken a lot off the table as we go into our final uh, famous foursome. Uh, th- maybe the 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 original foursome. Don't go back as far as the Wizard of Oz. We're talking about the Beatles. Here. Yeah, that's right. The uh, Fab Four. The Fab Four: Paul McCartney, John Lennon, George Harrison, Ringo Starr. Do we want to try to run down their personalities? Sure, yes. Okay, Paul McCartney, one of the, like, visionaries of the group. Uh, Visionary of the group, I would say, has kind of, like, the schoolboy charm of the group. Yeah, and also in his songwriting, like, kind of favors more, like, treacly, super sweet, um, but, like, catchy as all get out. Yeah. He's a genuine Mm genius-level talent, which is probably true of all of these, (laughs) of all the Beatles. Um, But, yeah, schoolboy charm for sure. John Lennon. Also visionary genius songwriter of the group, um, but like harder edges. Yeah. Leans into controversy. Mm-hmm. Wants to be a little stinker, um, but like do something with his little stinker. You know, like he's not doing it willy nilly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Has something to say. Yeah. Um, George Harrison. I. Yeah. George Harrison. Uh, he's the one that gets into kind of like the uh it's not spiritualism. What am I trying to the say? Mysticism. But like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And gets into a little more like the, uh, uh, like Hare Krishna, like that kind of uh, stuff. Um, so he's a little bit more, um, a little bit more connected to his spiritual side. I also feel like his music is uh, more 
for me, like, I want to say, like, almost, like, cerebral in a way. It sure. feels uh, like all they are all such, like, amazing songwriters that, you know, it's not luck. Like, they all um, – but his songs, to me, feel the most, like um, – uh, uh, they feel the most written, the most like orchestrated. Yeah, well, and they're the most, they're definitely the most like going on a journey, um, which isn't to sell like any of the rest of them short. Or, I mean, like Paul McCartney is famous for like jamming six songs together and being like, ah, that's live and let die. Um, but uh, George Harrison will, within the vocabulary of a single song, take you on a longer journey that feels more earned. Um, yeah, it's almost like describing like great authors, right? Because like they, do, they yeah. and th- they all just have like different like syntax, like different yeah. like yeah. way a- of writing um, their measures or their sentences. And yeah, like I, I, yeah, it, Ringo Starr. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh f- on, on on to Ringo Starr, the pro. Uh, yes. The he was older than the rest of them. Um, he was in some ways like kind of just uh, cashing a, a, a huge paycheck, um, but also like you could tell totally relished in the like being able to do the psychedelic stuff um, is sort of like the aging hippie, even in the sixties. And, right? and I feel like that he uh, has the re- kind of like the reputation of um, contributing the least. And uh, one thing that I admire about Ringo Starr is one, I don't think that's, you know, I mean, unearned yeah. reputation, but also like has never seemed to have a chip on his shoulder about it, which I'm sure was a very, and I'm maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but I'm sure that was a very difficult right. like reputation to have. And that's, yeah, you're right. That that's not part of his public persona yeah. is like being the He's one not who bitter. Con- contributed the least to the Beatles. No, like uh, as a drummer, he makes compositionally interesting choices that another drummer wouldn't make. Um, does that make him a great drummer or just a great musician who plays the drums? Uh, I think it's the latter. Um, but obviously, they're all uh, incredible. Right, <laughs> yeah. The Beatles. Yep. Um, all right. Who from Nintendo are the Beatles? Yeah, this is really hard because I feel like, I, for me, I feel like we have to, like, I have to separate the, like, genius aspect of it right. and lean more into the pers- their public personas, like, their put-upon personas sure. in so order like, to, like, get through this. So here's, here's a pitch for Paul McCartney, then, and possibly even a pitch for Paul McCartney and John Lennon together. Banjo and Kazooie. Oh, <laughs> that's good. I, uh, John Lennon, when you were talking about like Little Stinker, I was immediately thinking like, oh, D- Bowser Jr. is the John Lennon. Ooh, I mean, that that's really good too. There's something about them being a package deal though. Yeah, no, that is very good. Um, so, uh, and, and I mean, come on, is Paul McCartney not Banjo? <laughs> no, you're so right. <laughs> no, it's really good. It's really good. Uh, I like Banjo and Kazooie a lot. Uh, all right, so that means we still have to figure out uh, George Harrison and uh, Ringo Starr. Also, can, can, can't you just picture, like, uh, Paul sitting at the piano playing Let It Be, and then uh, John Lennon pokes out of his backpack and goes, bah, bah, bah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yeah, that's so good. I, okay, Ringo Starr, hear me out. Hear me out. Yeah. Uh, Professor Egad. <laughs> I think it fits. Yeah, you're For right. For the public persona piece. He's like the elder statesman of the uh-huh. group. Um, he's kind of just like getting his stuff done. Has Seems some like, like he's like focused interest. on like the, yeah, yep. the thing that's in front of him. Yep. Yeah. I, th- I mean, I think you're uh, uh, the perfect support player. Uh-huh. Uh, I think you're right. I think E.Gad uh, is, is, is our Ringo star, which means we just have to figure out who is George Harrison. Who is George Harrison? Here's the thing. It's not Mario. I know we haven't used Mario yet, yeah, but Mario is not Mario is not interesting enough to be George Harrison. Right. In my there opinion. was a there was a second where maybe Doctor Mario was going to be uh, the Scarecrow from the Wizard of Oz, but Doctor Goomba Tower obviously beat him out for that. Yeah. George Harrison, not Mario. We're looking at the Super Smash Brothers screen. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm just going to call out some character names. So we can see how they feel. Pit. Could be Pitt. Could I, be Pitt. I feel like Pitt is. I Pitt kind of has more like Paul McCartney energy to me. Yeah, I mean, there's there is a lot of boyishness to Nintendo heroes, right? Um, so like, like Kirby doesn't make any sense there. Hmm. Yeah, this is. We may not find this one in the Smash Brothers roster. Okay. 
or Rosalina. Oh, interesting. So takes you on a little bit of a journey. Uh huh. Is like part of the group, but also in a way sort of separate from the group. Yeah. Right? Like you've got to beat the all of Super Mario 3D World in order to unlock Rosalina. You got to listen to the first couple albums of the Beatles before they let uh, George write a song. Um, and the sort of uh, spiritualism, the sort of mysticism. Spiritualism is definitely not right. We've said it too right. many times. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's not, it's not. Yeah. But the sort of yeah, like uh, Eastern mysticism, um, like sort of feels a, a, a piece with um, you know the stars and lumas and like birthing new galaxies uh-huh. and like the death of one universe is just the beginning of another. I like this a lot. Okay, um, so George Harrison is being played by Rosalina, um, which means we've got our Beatles, our Fab Four. Uh, is uh, Paul McCartney is banjo. And that means John Lennon is Kazooie. <laughs> and that means that George Harrison is Rosalina. Which, of course, means the Ringo star is Egab. Um, that's perfect. Mark, we have to put a little capstone on this. Um, I think this is, these have all been wonderful. I'm so happy we did this. Um, but there is a, a sort of uh, foundational quartet that we need to address, and that is Mount Rushmore, right? And we were like... Should we cast Nintendo characters as uh, U.S. presidents? <laughs> and then we we're like, no, there are slave owners on that mountain. <laughs> Let's not do that. That's not fun. Um, instead, we're going to create our own Mount Rushmore. All the characters are back in play yeah, here. Yeah, for sure. Um, so who are the four Nintendo characters that you put up on the Nintendo Mount Rushmore to be like representative of Nintendo? Yeah, like represent the spirit of Nintendo. Yes. Um, and I'm tempted to just do the first four characters on the Smash Brothers character selection. I mean, I so I think for sure Mario. Yeah. I think for sure Link. Link. I think for sure Samus. I so I don't know if for sure Samus. Okay. Um, I, I see you skipped over Donkey Kong because maybe he feels a little redundant to Mario, right? Like. Yeah, and I yeah I mean do, you could definitely make an argument for Donkey Kong. Um, I guess outside of Mario and Link, I, I don't hold any other two like too strongly that like have to be on there. Right. Well, so I wonder, does Pikachu have to be up there? Yes, I do think Pikachu. I I think Pokemon needs representation for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I I I, I think uh, I think it needs to be Mario, Link, Pikachu, and then like just thinking about what is what has been super popular for and from Nintendo in the last. Uh, decade and especially in the last three years like I think Tom Nook has to be on there yeah that's so interesting because like I <sighs> Animal Crossing was huge it was and uh, you know it, it has been popular for a while yeah I yeah I mean you may you or may is be it a right me? is it a me well, does, is does it a me bump link off like <sighs> no that I Mario must be there Pikachu must be there yeah what do you think about Kirby? Does Kirby need to be there? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe Kirby needs to be there. Well, what? What? maybe this is too much, or maybe it'll be helpful. Like, what does each one, like, represent for Nintendo, right? Like, Mario, a foundational, like, platformer. Yeah. Um, K- Pikachu, you know, like, the Pokemon explosion, are, and also gets RPGs in there. Right, right, and is also, uh, j- yeah, like the, the the cultural impact of of Pokemon, and I think that's I think that's the the piece that we need to be acknowledging here is cultural impact, right? Mario and Pikachu cultural impact undeniable, right? Right, and I I know this is crazy to say about a series that has been around since what the Nintendo sixty four era, but I don't know that Tom Nook is there yet, of yeah. that like same yeah. level. Yeah, I I. Huh. I think you're right. Uh, it, it, it bothers me a, a little bit, but I think you're right. Do we I do we need like Princess Peach on here? No, I don't think so. Okay. I, like I, I, I like she doesn't feel foundational to me, mm-hmm. right? Although not all of the presidents are foundational, right? Some of them represent like moments of change in the country's history. Um, so like do these characters like is, is that why we you know, put a me on there or something. Um, Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a really interesting point. 
to you mean uh, just to make it explicit because of like the Wii era and how right. important like that was for not just Nintendo but kind of like gaming in general. Yeah, and like <clears throat> I mean, I guess if 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 we are to track like the big Nintendo spikes, right? The big spikes of like cultural relevance. They are Mario, Pokemon, the Wii, and then the Switch. Mm -hmm. And the Switch, you can make your argument for Link being that because of Breath of the Wild, or uh, Animal Crossing being that. Yeah, and and so maybe that is an argument for Tom Nook or Isabel. I mean, I think Tom Nook just because he's he's in all the games, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know you, he's in the uh, New Horizons from the beginning, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, so I, for that reason, I. think... I think here's I'm gonna put forth Mario, Pikachu, a me, and Tom Nook. I think I, I like that. All right, I like that. Um, so there we go. And uh, I like I like the me because it could be you know, what a year was it like 2005 or whenever when Times Person of the Year was yeah you. you. <laughs> so you could put you could put your own me up there on the Nintendo Mount Rushmore. Um, that's good. I like that. Uh, all right, Mark, let's close this out. I'm curious what other people put on their Mario Mount Rushmore and or Nintendo Mount Rushmore, um, and use whatever criteria y you want. Uh, you can email us. You can tell us in the Discord. You can uh, hit us up on Twitter. What would the Mario Mount Rushmore be? Mario Mount Rushmore. Uh, Mario, Mario. Luigi. <laughs> Luigi. <laughs> Everyone's favorite, Luigi. Uh, uh, Princess Peach and Yoshi. Yeah, I think that's probably right. It's, it feels disrespectful to Toad. Which feels right. Which feels right. Yep. Also, no Bowser on there, strangely enough. Yeah. Not a force for good. No, but um, it, you could argue the U.S. presidents weren't either. But, you know, it's... Is that too controversial? <laughs> Daruk. Daruk. Daruk is the thing. thing. All right. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Remember, please rate, review, and follow us on Apple Podcasts. If you like the episode, you should share it on Facebook or Twitter, any place you share stuff. It uh, helps us out tremendously when you do that. You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKA Mitchell, and the show is at NinCart Society. There's also a Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Anthony DeLuca made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Apipetty. You can get more of his music by going to apipetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Ellers saying thank you for listening.